Hi everyone, I'm Ryan at Marine Parts Source, and today I wanted to highlight another really cool project from our folks at Marine Parts Source Specialty Services. Now our Specialty Services Division is located up in Port Huron, Michigan, and as you might have guessed, they conduct all sorts of special projects for boats. If you've got a dream about something you'd like to do to your boat, they're the folks that can pull it off. Recently, we had a local resident from the Port Huron area, Mark Walker, approach us with his 1940 Chris Craft Red and White, a real beautiful classic boat, and he wanted to install a bow thruster on that boat. That can be a daunting project when you're cutting holes into a boat with that kind of significance, that kind of history. So our folks were up to the task. They wanted to make sure that they retained that classic look of that boat while adding some modern functionality with a Vetus bow thruster. So before we could start this project, there was one important issue that we had to address. Now, a lot of classic wooden boats, they just have that one solid wood layer on their hull, and when you pull them out of the water, the wood is gonna contract, and then if you drop them back into the water, uh, the wood will expand back out, but that takes time. And a lot of times you need to use a hoist uh, to drop it into the water slowly. With this boat, however, we didn't have to deal with that issue, fortunately, because the way the hull is designed is that there are two layers of wood with a really thick layer of 3M5200 sealant in between them to kind of seal everything together so that when the wood is contracting and then expanding back out, all the cracks in between the slats of wood were completely sealed. There's no opportunity for the water to seep into the boat and cause any sorts of issues. Once we'd established that, we knew that this was a project we could definitely pull off and we were ready to get started. So when you're installing a bow thruster on any boat, it's a complex and specialized process. It's definitely not one we recommend that just anybody try. You want to consult with an experienced marine technician to conduct a project of this nature, especially when you're dealing with a classic boat like we were. You're going to be cutting a hole through the center of the boat's hull. So we took a lot of time to plan this project out from beginning to end, make sure we covered every step along the way and didn't miss any important parts. There's a lot of measurements that have to be taken. Taken. You want to make sure that they're precise. You're measuring over and over again so that you get it exactly right. Because once you start cutting on that hole, there's no going back. The first steps are to be to install the tunnel. What we have to do is, of course, cut the holes on either side of the hole that's going to fit the tunnel. We also have to take the tunnel and cut it to the exact size and shape to fit the boat's hull. Now the tunnel is just a big fiberglass uh, round tube that Vetus provides um, that you can cut to whatever custom shape that you need it to be. Once that's cut, we can fit the tunnel into the boat and see that it's fitting correctly. We're going to need to make some interior flanges that are going to help to seal it from the inside. We made these flanges out of fiberglass. We custom made them. And this is a pretty intricate process, but we've got some experts at fiberglass design at specialty services that really knew how to pull this off. So basically what we did is take the fiberglass while it's still wet, we've kind of measured our flanges already and, and we were able to install them inside while they're still pliable and they can take the shape of the boat's hull but we take them out before they've completely dried so they still retain the shape that they've taken on but they're not adhering to the hull of the boat. Meanwhile, we need to measure the hole for where we're going to drop the motor in. The motor is going to go in from inside the boat into the thruster tunnel. So it's got to be dead center of the boat. And so we had to measure that appropriately and also on the tunnel. And then we use a hole saw to cut that hole both through the boat and also into the tunnel itself. So again, that's where the measurements have to be precise. You want to make sure that you're exactly correct on that. Once the motor hole has been cut, we can take the tube out, clean up all the edges, make sure that it's a nice clean installation. There's not gonna be any opportunity for any kind of water to leak inside. We did observe that there were some gaps between the fiberglass tunnel and the boat's hull in different spots. So we used epoxy to fill all of those, make sure that they were taken care of. And we also then started drilling all the holes for the flanges, both the interior fiberglass flanges and also some stainless steel flanges that are going to go on the outside to make the installation look really nice and clean. Then what we did to put all these pieces together 
was we took the tunnel and put it into the boat, then using a lot of 3M5200, seal in the interior fiberglass flanges as well as the exterior stainless steel flanges, and then use through bolts to kind of sandwich it all together, compress it, keep everything in place, make sure there's no opportunity for water to leak in. Once that was all done, we could get on to the electrical. So the next step for us was installing the motor. Now, what's important here was that when we set the motor into place, we didn't want the weight of the motor to be held by the thruster tunnel itself. It's just fiberglass and over time, that weight will eventually crack the tube. That was a big problem that we wanted to avoid. So instead, we decided to build a custom bracket that would hold the motor in place and prevent any stress from being put on to the thruster tunnel. Once we had the bracket there, the motor was mounted, we could start doing the wiring. First, we wired the uh, power from the battery to the motor using some larger gauge wire. And then once that was done, it was time to wire the motor up to the control panel. So using some smaller gauge wire, we were able to run that wire up to the panel, connect it to the controls. Now, for the controls, you have a lot of different options. Vetus offers some really nice looking controls. But in this particular case, we're dealing with a classic boat and we wanted to keep that classic look and feel all throughout, even on the dash. We observed that there was already one style of push button control on the dash. We decided to use two push button controls that mimic that same style that was already on the dash. So we used one push button for the left movement and one for the right movement. Once we had those installed, the dash looked completely uniform, looked like it was from the factory this way, even though those two push buttons were controlling modern technology with a bow thruster. Now this boat is a classic, as I've mentioned before. I mean, it's a 1940 Chris Craft red and white wooden boat. Anywhere it goes, it's gonna turn heads and get people's attention. Even more so now that the word has gotten out in the area that we've done this project and put thrusters on this classic boat. I mean, it's just not something that you see every day. It was a daunting project, but it's exactly the type of out-of-the-box project that our techs at Specialty Services excel in. And so if you're ever thinking about a special project you'd like to do for your boat, and maybe it's a little bit wild and crazy, we're the guys that can help take care of it for you. So if you're in the Michigan area and you'd like to conduct a special project, don't hesitate to give Specialty Services a call at this number. And as always, if you're looking for parts and accessories for your boat, you can find them online at marineparts.source.com.